together the Hickman's fish taco and Hickman's flash taco and kind of create a little mix up so to get some of the ostrich of the fish taco and the flash of the flash taco and we'll call it the taco wagon and then attach the thread we're gonna make this one Kind of that magic three inch length. And on both of his, he uses mono and I don't, chameleon, and I don't have chameleon, so I'll be using the intruder wire. And I've got a, what is this, a 45, 45 millimeter OPST intruder shank and the chuck tool. This is the large intruder wire. We'll back it up here. And how I typically run, if I don't put on the hook now, a lot of times I'll throw on the hook for measurement and throw a piece of tubing in it. And you can. It's fine. But we can just kind of guesstimate to you just by holding the hook because the lengths, depending on the hook you choose, these lengths of the shank are going to vary. So if you used to go on Gatsu's and you switch to an owner or switch to a Daiichi, um, it'll change a little bit on it. So if you switch hooks like I just switched, I usually use Gamagachi, I just switched to a Daiichi. And my eyeball, my eyeballs are kind of not quite matching up here. So that looks like a good length. I'm trying to get this thing like to the, the three inches mark. So real quick, I was out my thread right at the base here. It's all kind of tied in. And once you create a thread base, put some zap down on the shank, wrap her up. Flipping back over, kind of get rid of some of this excess gap, spread it up on the thread. And since this is a return loop, I'm going to take both of the tag ends of the wire, flip them back over on the side of the return loop, and tie it back this way, making sure that there's enough zappa gap on here to grab the return as well. And get yourself some little wire cutters for that. All right. Got our wire in there, not ever going to go anywhere. For this one I'll use, i do purple and chartreuse. So some ice dub for the hot butt or hot spot. just a little ball there and for the rib on the original flies he uses saddle hackle and on this one I'm going to be wrapping polar reflective flash in purple and this stuff's corded or on a braid a synthetic braid and it's extremely durable so you don't have to worry about a counter rib or anything like that it's, uh, it's pretty strong as is. Body, UV purple, ice dub. You can use a dubbing loop if you'd like. There's really no reason to on this fly. Since we're not going to be 
really picking out the body or anything. I just want to kind of make sure it's not going to all fall out. And I'm pulling down the dubbing pretty tight. I don't want this real sloppy. I want it pretty tightly packed on there. So the best way to do that is to break it up into smaller stages with less dubbing. So if you'll see I'm doing this in stages, I'm not just creating one big huge like dubbing ball to wrap up. I'm, I'm doing it, I'm packing it tight and just taking more turns dubbing. And what I just did now is create a thread base For this next section, if you don't have thread down, you want to make sure you have thread down. That will create a much stronger fly. Alright, more thread, alright, we're good. I'm going to leave some room at the eye here. Reverse wrap, my polar reflector flash. kind of pull these fibers away so I'm holding these back and then just taking the fibers away from the tie-off point and I'll tie off real clean so I've got the piece I didn't use I tied off clean and I can reuse again body hackle done. Now for the flash part of the flash taco. I've got some angel hair and steelhead ice. I'm going to lay it up top, split it in half roughly. Lay it over the top, make two loose turns. Take your thumb and forefinger, spread it around so it's flared all over the top of your hook shank. Tie it down and take it, bring it over the loop of the eye. And tie it down. And by Taking it over the loop, it just inherently flares itself out. And I can, if I look at it straight on here, pretty good. And the flash is at your discretion as far as how much you want to use. I think I'm going to add just a little more. Pulling it kind of all up, placing it out of the way up top here. And then I've got some SSS Flash. And this is Rainbow from Hell. And it comes real long. I'm just going to fold it in half. Give it a cut. Now I'll put it together. So now if I spread it out, I got a good, if I spread it out pretty thin, I've got a good half inch of material here. I'm going to do the same thing, lay it over the top. A couple of loose wraps. Make 
make sure it's all spread out the way I want. Pull it tight, a couple securing wraps, bring it over. Give it an eyeball, looks pretty good. Finish her off. See how we're liking our taco here. All right, now let's get that hook back up. See where we're at. Okay. So I want this pretty much right at the rear of the hook, which is going to be about here. I'm going to grab it all, pull it up, grab it all in one, and I'm just going to make cuts back and forth real light and work my way up this pinch. So by doing that, we don't have this hard chop we've got all these different lengths that are going to move a little differently in different currents and not just kind of like lump up into just a glob and also this you know like nothing else it just looks better instead of just a solid whack you know all right dubbing loop time ostrich hurl Give yourself a pretty good dubbing loop so you can spread open really wide if you need to. The benefit about these, about doing a big dubbing loop, if you're using feathers or anything long, the wider you can open it, the more room you have to get your longer material in, and the less chance you have of it hitting one of your um, pieces of thread, one of your lengths of thread, and blowing it out of proportion or um, if you have everything evened up the way you want it and you hit that thread, it'll cock it to one side and kind of make everything screwy. And it can be pretty frustrating to fix. I'm going to grab Ostrich Hurl. This is down towards the base. It's a little fuzzier, a little fluffier. I'm going to grab, it's probably a good inch and a half. Take it all in one, take a look, see if I like the quantity I have. A couple guys that are getting a little out of control, we'll fix them. See if that's going to be enough, if I maybe want more. If I want more, I can lay this down on my desk and add some more to even it up, make it the same length. So I think that'll be all right. And when I grabbed it off the stem, I grabbed it long ways with my thumb and forefinger. When I clipped it, I tried to keep it long. Because that makes this step a lot easier. I'm going to put the ostrich hurl in the dubbing loop. Close the dubbing loop. And come up here measure for length. I need it to be a bit longer. So I'm just going to pull it all down. And see we've got our, our butts here. I'm going to spread them out with my thumb and forefinger very carefully. you want you can use your pointer finger on the back side to push it against the thread and then kind of use your scissors or bodkin in conjunction and what we're doing is trying to create good even spacing so when we wrap it, it's not all just in one side. What we don't want is to all have it leaning on one side. 
Alright, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to clip these buds. Sharp scissors are key here. If you have dull scissors, it'll pull the fiber, the feather fiber, and it'll pull it in a direction instead of a crisp cut to keep it where you want it, it'll pull it and move it. And if you move part of this, it can go, once it gets kind of cockeyed, um, you can affect the red, it's kind of like a domino effect, like it'll move them all. Now I can kind of even this up just by pushing down, straight down with my forefinger. Now I'm going to start spinning. in pretty good. Now we've got kind of this gap of thread here from the thread to our material. That's okay. Push these down and get them kind of contained here. Trying to get them all on one side. Ostrotro cooperates pretty good. We get some that don't cooperate you can always just add some water to it or spit and they will cooperate so as you wrap just make sure everything's pulled back nice and I must said nice and tight Watch a little Davy McPhail. Everything's going to be nice and tight. Alright, tie her off. Clean up the head a bit there. Click. And we'll see where we're at. That looks pretty good. Good length. Last but not least, the guinea collar. Big, big guinea feather, bigger guinea feather. Reverse wrap. When guinea breaks, it's usually that first wrap that's the one that nails you. And this feather is going to go haywire on me. So, what are we going to do here to fix it? protesting a little bit. Alright, we are done with finish. And we have a finished taco wagon. 
the benefits of both incorporated in one fly. If you find yourself on the river, you don't want this much flash. It's easy to rip out. That's one of the good things about this. The polar reflector flash is pretty translucent. It doesn't add a ton of add some brightness, you know, but it's not like true flash. It doesn't have like metallic properties to it whatsoever. But we've been getting these really sunny days out here. The water's getting pretty low and as is stated in some of the other videos we've done there at the shop, the uh, the lower and the clearer it is, the more and more I find that these really flashy flies end up catching more fish. And the fish kind of disappear anyway in low clear water. They tend to tank up in really deep slow moving pools that are hard to swing into. And so the fish that are exposed still tend to be a little bit more um, willing to attack if they don't spook. That's kind of your that's kind of your options. So I'm going to clip this shank. Man, I think it flew across the room. A loop on our hook. This wire is, if you've used it before, you're going to have to, uh, you know, you got to pinch it pretty good. You can take pliers. I don't like to take pliers to it, but you definitely can. Got a hook on there. And there is our finished taco wagon.